<laughs> Robin. You're listening to Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony on the virus. Serious XM. Pat Oswald outside the studio. What's he up to? Well, we're going to find out what Pat Oswald is all, all about. We were having a nice conversation. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he was talking about um, an old clip from our show that uh, I think his brother gave him, and he oh, loved man. it. Pat, how you doing, man? Hello, What's slapping You want to tell Ann uh, what we were talking about? Because it's yeah. definitely worth mentioning on the air. Uh, it's the clip of you. It, it, someone combined it on YouTube. It's the clip of you guys dissecting... Uh, um, Barry Williams's <laughs> Branson show, oh, and then goes oh, right God. into Yakov's Dinner Adventure. Dinner adventure. <laughs> I think I've watched that. Uh, I'm I'm not exact, but probably like ten times oh, at this point. Oh God! <laughs> Especially because that's my nightmare for where my career will right? end up. Of of like, okay, you got to think about this crowd and what they. Because what really is scary about that clip is what they're selling is for one night you get the you get. To have the world the way you want it, which is nice yes. and quiet and slow. Yes. And it's nice. Remember when the woman's like, you kept the food hot. <laughs> and she goes, I don't know how you did it. And you realize these probably what these people can afford is a lot of places where the food probably isn't hot. Oh, they don't cold. cook it really well. And there's nothing they can say about it. They, no. They have no power anymore. Powerless. So it's like for one night, it's a world where the food is hot. <laughs> there's no blacks. There's no <laughs> all this night you get. To have the world like it was right. in 1941 when you were still healthy right. and you weren't looking at death. Like oh that's my all God. that is. We might have to podcast that. That Sam. is Write it down. a great um, uh, assessment of that. And then the place. magnetic trays we were talking about. Uh, and yeah. there was a reason for the magnetic trays. Here's the reason for the magnetic trays. They found, they realized <laughs> if we get rid of the tables, we can pack 200 more people into this room and seat them and feed them like pigs. Like literally. <laughs> <laughs> and I think one of you guys were saying, yeah, and when the show's over, you know they just take a fire hose yes. to the floor and tables and just wash it into a sluice gate, probably at the bottom of the of the auditorium, and then just get the next round of Right, pigs. the next Because they do like five shows a day, like, get them in. Yes. Move, move. Move oh through. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. And then also the, the care that my personal chef takes. And as he's saying it, there's footage of just mass trays coming out with plastic covers to keep it hot like like the visual <laughs> totally negates everything that he's that bragging he's about saying, yes. my personal, my personal chef, chef. He, he totally slaves over this yes slaving over the frozen <laughs> yeah. chicken cordon bleu that yeah. he gets by the fucking like the, the, the uh, shipping containers <laughs> are yeah. out back full of chicken you don't think cordon chef bleu. was making it all fresh i don't think it's so weird. yeah and it, well it's it's weird that he says that it's making it fresh and yet they show yeah. a platoon of frightened <laughs> venezuelans who are working in his kitchen that are terrified of being hit. Like, it is, it is the most oh. horrifying. Oh. oh, God, that's Oh, that's so many. Mm. I, it's it's, it's one of our greatest I'm, discoveries ever. I'm oh. fascinated when we learned about this. Yeah, with Branson, that whole thing that like yeah. uh, mm. uh, they, they, we, we were watching that guy. What's his name? Kirby, the magician. Oh, yeah. And it was like this horrible trying to look like Vegas thing, but the tricks just weren't <laughs> good and and it wasn't the glitz, it was Branson. You know? well, also you gotta you you watch it and realize, oh wait, this is nine thirty in the morning. This yeah, isn't yeah. rat pack stuff. This is Right, right. And then we're gonna have my nap afterward and then yeah. three o'clock dinner. Yeah. And then we'll go to sleep and that's Branson. That's waiting for so many of us. I told Pat yes. if he enjoyed that, he has to do the Joe Piscopo one we did. Where you came in that day and said, you got to oh, see this Showtime I just, Joe Piscopo I w special. I woke up in the middle of the night, opened my eye, and Joe Piscopo was on. It was a new special that he had. It was Club Piscopo, it was called. Oh, and it's no. like him going, doodly you doo <laughs> uh, Just doing like, like Frank Sinatra stuff, t telling stories in between. The uh, song. This, this was recent. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Most recent Showtime special. Yes. Maybe no. a year ago. I, at this point. Oh, this is just. I was <laughs> stupefied. I, yeah. I, I was when I was in Staten Island. I was I was telling um, Opie that they, he has a like a he had it when I was there. He had like a residency at some hotel oh. that he was doing like out on Staten Island, which I thought that's kind of cool. Like he's out like while you're in Manhattan doing stuff out on Staten Island. <laughs> yeah. Joe Piscopo's going up right now and doing a show, but yeah, a yeah. whole show. Oh, is, is that like on? Can I? I just got 
XM Radio Satellite 103. I got that station, with, which has you guys on it. Uh-huh. And I just look oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Riding around L.A., it justifies all my <laughs> anger. <laughs> E-Rock's actually going to uh, burn a CD of the Joe Piscopo for you. I would. Oh, man. It I is, think you uh, would enjoy that if you like the, wow. the Yakov slash Barry Well, Williams the Yakov stuff. thing is great because they match the visuals to everything you yes, guys are talking about. Yes, I love that. They're really doing that. adds to the horror of what you're seeing. Like, like is, is, as bad as your descriptions are, all the visuals back up everything right you're there. saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm hoping There's someone no denying it. I'm hoping someone does that with the Happy Days thing we did yesterday. <laughs> oh yeah, because that'll do really well. And <laughs> discovered a Happy Days episode where they handle the the, the racial issue. The yeah. racial yeah, issue. Yeah. It was, huh? it was Tom Bosley has a black lines. friend. It was one of the original ones, <laughs> it was not terrific. in front of the live studio audience. It was done on film. It was one of the original ones. And, yeah, he no. was going to be the best man at a black guy's wedding. And they no. had the black guy at his house, and they had the stereotypical neighbor come over and go, oh, oh. And she's all, like, scared because he's a black guy. We watched oh, the crazy. whole episode yesterday. Oh, um, wow. On this show. The well, there's also thing. that clip where you guys <laughs> I can't believe I'm. I'm like. Uh, it's like I'm like I'm, I'm a nerd that won <laughs> win a morning with Opie and Anthony. And then do you remember that one episode that you did when you. But there's this episode where you guys dissected, and this is also on YouTube the the uh, the Dudley episode of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and in which it, you the line you uttered the line Dudley's a goer. <laughs> and like, huh. But then somebody there was a website I think it's College oh, Humor but or it might be another website but they pointed out all. All those very special episodes yeah. where a kid is molested yeah. or someone is raped or someone has cancer. Or overdoses. Yeah, or overdoses. <laughs> those were live tapings for an audience, most of which had traveled from the Midwest. Like, we're going to go right. to L.A., we're going to go see a show, and they've bought a ticket, and they've sat there for four hours <laughs> to watch a kid get raped. <laughs> like, they, their I'm big glad. Hollywood trip right. yeah. ends with watching a show about a kid being molested. They like, just wanted to to laugh. Yeah, oh, exactly. yeah, I thought you were saying they were the lucky audience. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the best birthday I ever had. Yeah, they just wanted to escape. One yeah. of those shows, like, oh, I'm going to see the show. It's a comedy. We all laugh. We watch Boulevard it every week. And, yeah. we watch it. and they got to sit there with the audience that goes... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that low, like, oh. oh. The other yeah. one time they hear Arnold say, what you talking about? It's to a man about to rape his friend in a fucking empty tub. Right. <laughs> what you talking about? It's not the same yeah, the fun catchphrase tone. isn't as yeah. fun. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, it's actually, it's really, what, what you <laughs> talking <laughs> yeah. about? Yeah, what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This we we is do our like our anniversary. We do like picking things apart on this show. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Happy Days asshole. one is the latest one. That was that, that was yesterday. It, yeah, was it was fun. Fun man. to watch them juggle the racial issue and uh, <laughs> oh, and, and it was, it was so scary Marshall handed. style. Yeah. Yes, it was done so <laughs> ham handedly. You got just, a clip there, just Sam? Awful or no? Uh, I have. I'm just looking up to see what's out. There's a four and a half hour YouTube video, which is the uh, all parts the saga of you guys and Joe Piscopo. Wow! Uh, so if you have four, well, and are and there half visuals hours. and stuff? Because I think, I the think la- there are some throughout. I think oh, the God, next, okay. The next day we had him on the show. Yeah, it was a trilogy. <laughs> you were oh, it man. was a trilogy. Yeah, yeah. It's five parts. You rock is saying, and then you know, then he started coming in. And he's getting girls pregnant all over the place. We're like, will you stop? He's an animal, Piscopo. He's an animal. We love yeah. him. Yeah. In the end, we love the guy. Oh, he loves throwing that seed around, that Piscopo seed. <laughs> yeah. yeah he, uh, man, he just knocks these young girls up. He's got, he's got to fertilize the earth. <laughs> yes. With when, the earth, when the earth loses its Piscopo, the dead will walk <laughs> yeah. the earth. That's why Piscopo's we here. We could get him on the phone right now if you want to say hi, uh, Pat. Jesus. We I wouldn't want, know what to say. Want a exactly. quick phone call with... Uh, with Joe, we put the whole thing on a podcast too, so it's out there. Okay, the, good. The whole. Right. I'm yeah, telling you, the Joe yeah. Piscopo stuff is oh, terrific. I love that he just refuses to pull out. Like I really respect him. <laughs> oh yeah, he's had nothing but bad luck, and he just won't stop fucking aiming for the womb. <laughs> <laughs> he is a fertile guy. Holy shit, this guy's, this guy's batting fucking eight seventy with Hall of Fame numbers. He has. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I almost want to just play the Joe Piscopo now. Oh, that's great. Mm. Oh, it was so much. Fun. And then I saw, I saw you're all over Channel uh, 11 here in New York. You're all over that, the uh, King of Queens, and then oh, I turn on, yeah. then you're, you're at the video store at Seinfeld. <laughs> oh yeah, that oh that role, that's my great, uh, my that was that, that, that when, when you that was my first TV role, and that's the classic first timer on TV. I, I'm basically I'm there just to set up 
uh, Jason and I was going to do something funny, and uh, I'm trying to get a laugh from my like. Uh, I'm, all, all I'm saying is, I'm sorry, sir, it doesn't work that way, and I'm putting so much spin on each of my words. Like, I'm going to make something of myself. Nothing. Uh, so oh, no. out. Someone has it. Out. Oh, oh no, I've, I've been to four other places. You're the only ones that have had it. Well, I can put it on reserve for you if you'd like. Maybe we could call them and ask them to turn animated. <laughs> Sorry, we can't do that. <laughs> Boom! Oh, I, 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 oh, go pick it up. I don't think so. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> doesn't work that way. <laughs> oh, oh, damn it! And then it's my back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just. <laughs> Wait a minute. Though. That was, your, that was one of your first times on TV, though? That was my very first very paid first. acting gig on TV. Wow, that's Absolute cool. first one. Yes. That was the first one. 1994. Good for you. Wow, and then man. I got a call to start. <laughs> well, after it aired, I got a call. This call from a, a, a not even a friend of mine from high like this acquaintance that was like, uh, "Hey, I, I checked you out on TV." I'm like, "Oh, hey, thanks, man." He goes, "Yeah, you know, I'm thinking uh, maybe I'm getting in acting now." You know, like I was thinking <laughs> no, about this. And I go, gonna... "Oh," and this is a guy that never was. And, and I go, "Oh, okay." He goes, "Yeah, so I'm gonna maybe come if I came out, like I could crash in your spare room or something." And I said, "Well, I." I'm living in a studio apartment. I my bed is in my kitchen, and he and he's like, "Oh, come on, man! I just saw you on TV, and now you're trying to." Uh, I go, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Wow, you have a house. I saw you on TV. You have a house." Just because and, and you're, I, you're yeah, and I was like, uh, I've, "I made works. less on that gig than I have on any." <laughs> like, there's that basically got me an aftercard. I didn't even get money yeah, off of that. Yeah. So people actually will think that I I was guilty of the same thing with uh, our own Greg Opie Hughes here oh, right, well. back when um, I was just doing Opie's show uh -huh. uh, from seven to midnight. I was a big deal as a uh, as a single out on Long Island, sir. Oh, I didn't out wow. on Long Island. I was, I was kicking ass on I'll Long Island. I'll check your Wikipedia page. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> WBAB is out on Long Island. And Doing I very say, well for and, myself. And, and I would I would come in like maybe once a week and and do something. And then I was like, oh, you want you know, why don't you come over to my house? We'll hang out. I'm like, holy fuck, <laughs> this is fucking cool. Yeah. And uh, and he tells me where to go, and I'm driving. I'm like, wait, this isn't this isn't. <laughs> This should be like a gated community right, of mansions. Right. <laughs> and then he, he, he pull, I pull up to this house, and, and, and he's like, hey, what's up? And I look around, and it's just... A shitty house, and I don't even have the whole house. No, I'm you didn't even have the, the whole house. house. <laughs> I'm running the top half. <laughs> and I'm like, what the... And then I started thinking, because it was in Northport, and I'm just yeah. kind of like, oh, this must just be a summer home. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'll be summering in Northport. <laughs> summering. You know how people go to out? Northport just to chill out? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. It was an old house, a lot of rusted shit in the yard, and, and the backyard. Yeah, yeah. I was porch. just like, oh, man, I thought... I had to deal with a horrible he's, landlord. He's got his own radio show. He's got to be wealthy. <laughs> what did you guys do in the house together that day? Yeah, that's We it. actually watched uh, The Crow. Did we really? Yeah, it was the crow. <laughs> there's something, there's something so creepy about it. Yeah. you guys watching yeah. the crow. That's so little, random. Little did we know the future <laughs> would be this. Yeah. And it was. I remember though, because it was like there was no lights on either. It was really dark. <laughs> of course it was. You're off the air at midnight. So it <laughs> going for two in the morning, fucking no, brew I mean, and crow in the house, wow. like like in that little living room area. I didn't have money to pay the electric bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So you guys watching the crow? Watching the crow. The morning together and yeah. You know, yeah. We're like, I have plans to conquer New York. Talking well, about what's going to happen. <laughs> yes. but, it, but it continued in Boston. <laughs> in Boston, we were kicking ass together now, and we weren't making any money. No. We finally made money when we came back to New well, York. I realized oh, very wow. quickly that that was a fallacy, that if, it was, if <laughs> we you're were, on the radio, you're wealthy. We were huge in Boston, and we were still struggling. More, yeah. More or less. Yeah, I hope he was living with my mother-in-law. Yeah, I lived with her for six months going, fuck, that's six months of rent I, I don't have to deal oh, with. Right, right. You can get yes. some savings or something. Yes. We moved in. And we all were living there. Me, my wife at the time, and uh, Opie, and the mother-in-law, living in the in her little fucking townhouse. And uh, but but my wife and her mother got along so poorly that it was like day one. She's like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I gotta get away from this bitch. And, and I go to Ed. I'm like, Well, oh, oh, you guys are leaving, but this is great. I yeah, like, like this. Fucking, <laughs> she cooks dinner. She, she, fucking, she actually did my laundry. Yeah. I think she made the bed every day when I went to do the radio show with Ann. I'm like, well, think and my I chick was... at the time didn't want to move to Boston, so I'm like, what the fuck? I'll just stay where I am. That's what I was thinking at the time, too. It was kind of like, oh, I could fucking, you know, 
you save up some money. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how we got into this? I don't know. <laughs> this is depressing. All the millennials out there. Yeah, can we get off on a different subject right now? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm living with my parents. I have a law degree, for God's sakes. Yes. Oh. Okay, the Piscopo Saga. The I Piscopo like saga. saga. Sorry, I'm looking at the. I don't even know if you need the visual on that one. I think you could just pop well, that. We play a little audio, like driving I around. Yeah. I lived at home until I was 30. And you know how I remember I met a girl in Vegas when I was opening for Dice at the fucking Venetian. And she thought I was fucking hot shit. And I was joking with her. I was being sarcastic. I'm like, yeah, I got a jag and a Benz. And she's like, really? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. She believed it. Oh. And then she fucking, I, I, she, I flew her to uh, to Jersey where I lived with Florentine. Oh, no. And uh, I'll never forget when she saw what a fucking hunk of garbage my apartment was because I had the roof leaking. Remember? She's like, do you have any, any vodka? And I, got, I, I gave her a fucking vodka, and I just taught her chess in my living room. It was fucking... That home. was your whole That was my time. Was wow. my, I felt so bad about that. It's black mold on the walls. Yeah. We yeah. did a Cribs with Jim Norton. We actually went through his place. Really? When I was 33 years it old. Was it was terrible. unbelievable how much mold he had in that joint. It was terrible. I love how she immediately goes, do you have any vodka? Like, she, can I just numb this? Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's what it was. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. Well, like, like, I'm, I'm about to get surgery in the Old West. Just give me some bourbon, <laughs> and the, let's get this over yeah, with. Where's the well, Benz? You gotta tell him real fast before we move on to other shit, you would bring girls back to your parents' house. Well, I was in my late 20s, yeah, I'd get blown in the fuck. I remember me and my friend Larry got a fucking pregnant prostitute in my fucking grandmother's uh, where she, she's dead, but in her basement. And this girl sparked up a crack pipe. She sparked up a fucking crack I'll never forget that. Nine in pregnant. grandma's house. Yeah, I mean, by, well, no, my parents' house. Oh, in basement. your parents' house. Jim, you casually rushed by about eight <laughs> right, horrific things <laughs> just to get to the point of your story. I got to blow this pregnant prostitute in my yeah, grandma. Yeah. She's dead. So yeah. anyway, <laughs> Wait a minute, we're, we're, getting, we're just rushing by all yeah, that yeah. shit? What are we, where are we heading? Like, what's, what's the kicker of this, of all that? Yeah. Like, ah, don't worry about it's that. It's just the illusion of wealth people yeah. have. They think that you're doing better in show business. They have no idea. That yeah, that is so, true. This, I lived in this house. Just show them the photo being pulled apart. That's what, I lived in this house until I was I was doing comedy for 13 years. 10 oh. years to 13 years is when I lived here. Just, just the photo. Don't even show them the whole house. It's too long. But oh, yeah, just show them oh, the black Lord. mold. There's all the mold oh, on the ceiling. Oh, God. Yeah, this is online if yeah, you guys want yeah. to check it out. Oh, behind that pic picture. That is disgusting. <laughs> this, look, this is, that's, look at it. The mold is leaking. Watch when they lift Whoa. that picture up. This is so yeah, fucking Yeah, they were hiding terrible. the mold with that picture, obviously. No, I don't want to. <laughs> yes. Wait. Yeah, this is where Wait, I live. There's man. mold. Here we go. Okay, they are lifting a picture up. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, yep. no. That's yep. like Amityville horror shit that's right there. Eight. Isn't Shit, that, isn't, it, oh, and, and it's under, of course, a nice framed Chagall. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my framed Chagall. Uh, isn't that like, the, the, in the, isn't that that weird brain-eating mold? That, yeah, that's, that's, that's just you, dangerous. You have to flee the house that's once the you have mold, it? Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. yeah, I think so. This doesn't oh. seem that long ago. Yeah, it's, it's fucking. It's got to be 13 years ago, right? Uh, what are we, in 2013? Oh, God. Yeah. yeah, it's 13 oh. years ago. Yeah, I'd, I'd been at oh. it probably... Almost nearly twenty years before I could afford a house. There's just yeah. there's not that much. Wow. People people see you because you have so much exposure. People don't realize that fame and fortune are usually <laughs> completely opposite. Yeah. yeah, you know, you can be very famous and have zero fortune. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. really is a fucking long process to make any kind of fucking real money, man. Yeah. And people are so disappointed when they realize. Oh man, that yeah, you're broke. If you're, <laughs> yeah, if you're on TV, you have a shitload of money. That's the the illusion. Yeah. And then when you start making money, one of the first things you have to do is start paying off all the debt you accrue <laughs> to even get... Like, I had to... I had so much debt that there was nothing I could do about it. Like, I have to oh, keep man. living in this debt because this is the life I'm living. Mm. And then I was... Thank God I was able to finally pay it off. That's exactly. It yes, that happened to me, too, with credit cards and shit. Yeah. I was like, I just... I I just resigned to the fact that I am going to be paying the minimum balance yep. for the rest of my life. Oh, yeah. Uh, how many times? So, I, I remember one time. Oh, God. Okay. I was in San Francisco. My phone got cut off because I hadn't paid the bill. So I got to <laughs> walk down. I was rolling nickels and quarters. I had oh, this yeah. huge bucket of change. And I sat there for a few hours and rolled enough <sighs> to literally, I had like, Two hundred dollars in Righteous. nickels. I had them in a big bag, a trash bag, and I walked down to the uh, the office, the the phone company office, where you literally can pay it in person and get it turned on right there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm lugging this trash bag down Clement Street <laughs> so I can go pay my bill. And there's this kid, a I was like twenty at the time, he was like seventeen, a able-bodied 
totally healthy young kid uh, begging on Clement Street, oh. just like, hey, you get any change? Like, just, again, this is like early 90s. And I was like, I am really sorry. I don't have any money. And I actually stopped. There's no reason to talk to this, this idiot. Right. And I'm like, I got to go pay this phone. I have just enough to pay it. I got to get my phone turned back on. And I, because I'm trying to be a member of society, you able-bodied <laughs> young man. So then I go to the office. I pay it. But I was like, I had like 87 cents left. Like, oh, I actually had more than I thought. Nice. I was so happy that when I was going back, I passed him. And I went, hey, man, look, I got I got some change. And I gave him my change because I was in such a good mood. Oh, man. And then he stopped and he went, you said you were broke, you fucking asshole. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Like, Holy fuck? shit. So, uh, okay, that's yeah. got it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You don't oh, realize people man. can rip you off on credit cards, too. That's a problem. When, like, you get into credit card debt. I was like, I had $3,000 on each one, and then all of a sudden I had uh, like a $10,000 hit. Whoa. And I, I used to go to these prostitutes and pay with a credit card. <laughs> I, never, <laughs> I really would. It would never occur to me that they would rip you off. Oh, really? The <laughs> wow. prostitutes wow. wouldn't uh, yeah. rip you off. Yeah. So I, I had fucking I had, to, I had to call and fucking get ten thousand dollars worth of fucking bullshit charges taken on my credit cards. Well, that's Pain weird because you, you haven't seen the uh, the Jim Memorial uh, Jim uh, Norton Memorial thank you from all the prostitutes for all the rice cookers and uh, you know laundry machines you bought them. There's a whole oh that joke went fucking oh my god I could not have been sweatier or clankier. Jim, did you see Clanky. the one time? Did, oh fuck, clankier. I literally limps my way um, towards a non punchline right? Yes. right? I threw out a dumb story that there really was nowhere to go with. Where do you, I gave you the beginning, middle, and end. There's nowhere to go with it. I, I, hey, Why? That's an amazing story without the details. I Who didn't mention they were trannies. I mean, believe me. <laughs> well, thank oh, God boy. I didn't throw that in. But what? Jim's face uh, was literally, he was, he was, I was like, again, I was like a special kid. <laughs> spending a day with him. Like, Let's let him tell his story. <laughs> and then when you, oh, God. Jimmy, what, right. uh, when, uh, when a pregnant hooker shows up, are you are you pissed? She didn't show like, up. We picked her up. <laughs> oh, Christ. She was a How pregnant? Worker. Eight and a half months, nine months. I mean, oh, my God. God. Yeah, no bullshit. No, no, was, and no you had no problem? Walking no problem with it? I don't remember why we did that. I remember she blew both of us. She blew me and Larry, and then she sparked up a crack pipe right by my grandmother's old bookcase. And she had a copy of Johnny We Hardly Knew Ye in the bookcase <laughs> about JFK. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they were just Jimmy and his friend were reading the Good Earth. They're like, "Oh, that scene where she gets burned in the rice field." Let's just try to recreate that. Oh, yeah. Was there any Fuck. guilt? Mm, yeah, a little that bit. That she was eight and a half, nine months recovery, pregnant. Yeah. yeah, no, it was the drugs. I felt bad about. Like, ah, man, it's it's like you ever smoke coke when it's being cooked? It's a fucking no. It's a very distinct odor. Oh. It's where my parents would fucking smell it. Oh man, <laughs> was, were they upstairs at the yeah. time? Yeah. You bring a fucking pregnant hooker into the downstairs part of the house when your parent. I remember being nervous, like just having a girl over right. on the couch doing normal fucking shit. You know, making out and dry you were, humping. You were worried they were going to come like, check oh, it out, what right? Was that? What yeah, was yeah. that? Is that not a pregnant hooker <laughs> smoking crack no. next to Johnny We Harley <laughs> knew yeah, ye. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait till Jim gets his Louis style show and his pitching stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. so in this episode, it's, there's a pregnant, <laughs> oh, like, like three months. Oh, no, nine. She's got to be nine, no, like, no, right. No, right. Should we smoke and crack? Trust me, <laughs> Jim already has that show written and is yeah. just trying to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. can, we, can we get the clearance to use the book Johnny We Hardly Knew? I need that in the shot. I need that to frame the left side of her face. Yes, it really, she's doing it. So a the camera has there. to pan to that before commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pat, Pat, what are you promoting? We, we didn't have any mention of Pat's promoting. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Whatever happened to Moby Dick? Is that a book you've written? Or? Yeah. I'm saying. No, oh, I'm, uh, I, there's two things I'm doing. I, the next Tuesday is the season two premiere of The Heart She Holler, uh, which is an adult swim show that the guys hmm. did. They did Wonder Shows. I don't know if you ever watched Wonder Shows. And it's, Wonder Shows and is amazing. It's this, it's like a, I, it's like if, if Sesame Street were on bath salts and they <laughs> go and just, Drive people in New York insane and mm -hmm. and do they they have these things like uh, kids on the street, kids on the beat, beat kids, beat kids, <laughs> and it's like kids doing the news. So there's a kid, they dress a kid as Hitler, and then he's talking to me like, what's wrong with what do you think is wrong with the youth of today? Like these old people, are like why are you oh, dressing shit. Hitler? Like they're so upset. And then they also send this kid to the racetrack to talk to 
just these old people to racetrack. This one little kid's like, I can do an impression of you. And this, this, this sweet old man's like, really? Yeah. Gamble, 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 die. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so those guys did this show called oh, The Heart She Holler, which is like, think of the, think of the most annoying Brooklyn hipster. And what they think the South is, uh-huh. they think a red state is, and then give that person bath salts, and that's what the show is. It's just this insane inbred. And we did six episodes two years ago, and adults wow. them liked it so much they went, "Why don't you do fourteen more? We're going to run them every single night of the month, like a soap opera." Oh so it's shit! Just weird. Wow. They're each like eleven minutes long, and it's the most nice. Pop- they do short shows on Adult Swim. They right? do very short. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah, has yeah, that yeah. nice, like, cool. If it's only eleven minutes, just do eleven minutes. Make it great. Yeah, yeah. And and it is the most disgusting shit I've ever done on camera. Oh wow! The weirdest shit I've ever done. If you want to watch, like, people crawling into women's vaginas and <laughs> and a a, 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 a woman. There's a scene they showed last night. They did a thing at the Nighthawk in Brooklyn where a, where a guy. Oh god, this is so gross. Um, I'll base. I'll just put it this way. He, she. A woman does him from behind because something is sticking out of his rear <laughs> that she is riding, but uh, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> it's horrifying. I, I, I would gather. Is she sharing a dildo with his asshole? In her uh, you know what? See, that would be nice. No, it's something even. Oh, more nice! A, duty? a very solid log. There, thank wow, you. Wow, I didn't want to be the one to say it. So, but it's it's brilliant. <laughs> it, it is a it's a brilliant show. And then the uh, and. Then then, now that I've said all that, uh, next Saturday, the 21st in L.A., I'm doing uh, the, the Los Angeles Public Library is doing this <laughs> celebration of Moby wow, Dick. Wow, look at so that. You're all So I'm doing three over. readings. I'm just going to go to three different libraries and <laughs> read sections from Moby Dick, which um, they, they've sent me these sections. I mean, I've never read all of Moby Dick. I'm going to mm-hmm. oh, admit Pat- it. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, that is a seriously fucked up book. Yeah, some of the stuff that goes on in that book, it's just pages and pages of just psychosis. <laughs> that so I'm going to be reading some of the, the weirdest parts because doing Are you this gonna whole thing. Put on a dramatic reading <laughs> dramatic. voice. I think I'm going to put on. I'm going to try to, and then I'm going to get confused and angry because these passages are really, really weird. I didn't yeah. know that Herman Melville was so. Twisted. Damaged, yeah, twist like just a twisted. damaged guy. Yeah. How uh, how long is each passage? Each uh, like a page and a half, like really quick, and then I'll talk to the audience about like what the hell just happened, like, and there'll be people there that you know there's there's already people like because I was announcing it on Twitter, and then they're like, hey, make sure to read this passage because and like I've been looking some of them up, and they're they're really hard. It's a oh, there's some twisted book. shit in there, like his fucking captain and the cabin boy and shit. And, you, there's a lot man. of like. There's all this. There's all these references, or at least they allude to the idea that he's gone. To, he hates this whale so much that he's gone to all these islands of different savages, and he's storing these like Zoroastrians and these crazy religious fanatics. But he keeps them stored like under the decks, and they just sit there smoking weed all day and going crazy. And the minute the whale services, he's gonna like let these maniacs loose to go kill this thing. So, he, <laughs> what the so, the, fuck? so on the on the on the deck of the ship is Queequeg and Ishmael. All these guys, but then underneath of it, it's like the gathering of the juggalos, um, <laughs> and he's just giving them all PCP and they're gonna go to the <laughs> throw them out like a cluster bomb it's of am- savages. Yeah, it's, exactly, it's amazing. Yeah. So. <laughs> I had no idea. No. I've never read the book. No, I, yeah. I know nothing. I think I might have to read that one. That's cool. I just Who, uh, hear the name and giggle. Yeah. <laughs> Can't help it. <laughs> well, also, what I didn't know about the book was Herman Melville was this hugely successful, like, killer diller author of money, fame, and then he spent all these years writing his great American movie, and it ruined him, and he died penniless and kind of really? crazy. Yeah. Wow. This thing just ate him alive, and he wouldn't, and they put it out. Everyone hated it. Like, all their viewers were like, this is the worst, most unreadable piece of shit. Fuck. This guy flushed his career down the toilet. This when did was, it become a classic uh i think like 50 years after he was dead wow yeah it was really weird it just kind of he just kind of blew it so damn yeah 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 yeah. yeah. it was just it was a guy like imagine 
uh, like imagine, think of like Bruce Springsteen, and then all of a sudden for the la- he stops doing music for ten years, and then comes out with this weird atonal, like he's just banging on like a weird like a Dixie yeah. cup with, his, <laughs> with, with, like, a, with a mummified over. penis yeah, yeah. for four hours, <laughs> and everyone's like, "That's it." Is all I'm doing from now on. They're like, "God, he's going," and then he just ends up like dying in a men's hotel somewhere. <laughs> but then fifty years later, people dig and that. Like, this is the greatest album ever. Do you know the history of how it turned it around and how it became that? A I don't. I still got to read that part because it's an amazing it is a fascinating story about a guy burning his life right. to the ground and then that becomes a thing he's and then, then his big bestseller books no one gives a shit about that, yeah, that yeah. were bestsellers during his lifetime no one reads what, anymore, when, no one when did he what was his uh, life and death years roughly uh, the, I see. I don't know. Did that he part. die in the 1900s or the 1800s? Uh, I think he died in the late 1800s, but don't quote me. Yeah, mm. there you go. Get on well, Wikipedia. We're gonna have to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he's also his other big. His, one of his big best sellers was called Umo. Uh, O O M O, and if you do crossword puzzles, you see that a lot. Yeah. Just says Melville novel. Oh, this person needs vowels in his <laughs> puzzle, so here comes Umo. Get no Umo because that's going to be the one in there. Well, you got uh, 1819 to 1891. He lived the fuck what was he? 72. 73? Almost made oh, it. 72 years old, right? Lived a long life, died miserable. You doing animation Damn. still? Yeah, I do. Well, you know, now I, 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 because my daughter is four and we watch all these animated shows and then sometimes I'll tweet about them like as a, like, oh, I'm, I, I can't get the, the Doc McStuffins uh, oh, tune Jesus, out of my head. Of course. And then they'll call me and go, hey, you want to do a voice? I'm like, yeah. all my, all of your favorite like 90s musicians are all doing kid shows now. Uh, Mickey yeah. Mouse Clubhouse is They Might Be Giants. They do all the music. Uh, Doc McStuffins is that girl from Letters to Cleo. Oh shit. And she's yeah. like this big songwriter and does all, so it's like all of your alt ninety darlings. That's where they went. Oh they, yeah, they all went there. They knew where like there's cash in that, right? Oh my god. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like it, yeah. they, they all they're all they don't have to tour. I, they're happy. It's gotta be easier to write. My son's go to movie in the car is Ratatouille. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, when I saw Pat I'm like, Can I just choke you please? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Because when these kids latch on to a movie, they will not let go for uh-huh. a long time. I will say though that that's a that's and I a love a very movie, smart by the way. kid that can watch Ratatouille at age three. He loves it. And <laughs> although just, he makes us fast forward through the the scary parts, the whole rainstorm in the beginning and stuff. Well, just yeah, yeah, because and he, the shotgun, like yeah, it's really dark. Yeah, he he knows when you know he he's scary like scary part. Yeah, yeah, but he doesn't want to turn it off. He goes just fast forward for me. Yeah, I want to see the rest <laughs> of it. That's crazy. Just be happy that because one of the things my daughter is into is that Dora the Explorer. That's mm-hmm. okay. Dora yeah. the Explorer. You like Dora the Explorer? <laughs> how much? How much do you like it? One, <laughs> two, three. He knows. Oh no! Oh God! It's- for, for us, it's Caillou. Caillou uh, yeah, so is the whiny little bald. He's a kid. whiny little fuck. And then I hear my son imitating Caillou. I'm like, no, you're not <laughs> going to imitate Caillou. Yeah, it's and and also now a lot. Of these, I hate. That's the only one I can't stand out of all the kids' programs. Yeah, and Caillou. she loves and that little theme, that weird. I'm Caillou. I've heard that. Yeah. Do you do animation voices, Jim? Because you have an amazing voice for animation. You should be doing voiceovers. Thank you. I wish there was somebody else in my career that felt that way. <laughs> Person of power or influence <laughs> that is managing me. <laughs> when you, you were when you guys were playing the the early uh, early Jim Norton uh, oh yeah, yeah thing with that voice it, was, it sounded like you were doing a voice yeah oh, really? oh, how we doing yeah. oh, I should have been oh, fuck, had my throat God. cut ah uh, yeah that's back at was that, was that here we did it at NW. NW. it was just, just played, played that over, recently uh, best of yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we just played oh, last week amazing when, who, yeah. who, who came in Patrice, Patrice. Oh, fucking boss yeah uh, they were all it was just, it was like oh. they, Colin. they brought in the magnificent seven of ballbusters <laughs> and then found the most embarrassing yes. thing they, like it was the perfect storm of that, ball busting that's exactly we've done a few of those over the years they're oh, very oh. uncomfortable yeah, yeah. we've we've Pretty. played some of our old radio shows from oh. the beginning and you so, don't get Jimmy's old like stand up four words before somebody just jumps yeah. in and starts Whoa, pounding what? you what yeah. <laughs> it's, so yeah. it's humiliating Jimmy's yeah, voice it is, mine, yeah, mine was terrible ah uh, yeah people oh like me like me like me like me what were you they weren't what were you dressed in like how were you dressed what were you wearing um it, sh- it should have been a fucking suit with my hands <laughs> over my chest and I sat pillow <laughs> I was wearing fucking baggy purple like fucking no. workout pants no. and a Oh, dude, I was a comp- I was a cunt and a fucking a black like mock turtle. I, I was a comp- wow, just a zilch. 
An That's absolute tough. zero. At the time, you thought you looked good, though. Oh, my God, you know. I sure did. High yep. energy, smiling. You know, they like, they're enjoying me. <laughs> Always greeted with a smile and be totally inclusive. I uh, listen to No that. one left out. <laughs> you know that like me shit? That you got to be likable. You got to be likable. Uh. When you first start, you hear that, and, you know, you want the industry to like. It's all this nonsense you buy into that, thank God, some of us get out of. And, you know. Well, how much nonsense? Remember when you would buy into the idea that if you fuck up at this club or anger this club in your mind it's a network right and right. they all talk to each other and you'll be banned from all right. like yeah. it, like suddenly you have a cabaret card that's 1961 <laughs> and you're gonna be yeah. banned and then you realize later oh they were it, it would have actually helped my career if certain club owners had hated me immediately yeah because it would have the word would have gotten out that oh this guy's actually good if this asshole doesn't yeah like he him. hates him or yeah yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. Him, but, there's uh, no loyalty you could burn down the cleveland improv and then still hire you in baltimore <laughs> <laughs> yeah they don't give a shit <laughs> they really don't. So yeah, th- there was always that. Ugh, so uh, frustrating. How do you know, like, when you're starting out like that, what to even wear? Like, like, oh, I'm wearing these purple things. Like, w- was it a? Was it calculated? Did you go into that closet and be like, tonight I'm on stage, let me get that? Or did you just throw on the Club owner clean? gave me them. This guy, Mark Vito, who runs Club oh. Casbah, and uh, Wally Wally would give me a couple of baggy pants. I just thought they were kind of cool, and I would tuck my shirt in. Here's the one I wore during the my fight with you, Rock. Exactly. Uh. I would always try to like uh, wear the... I would always try to dress like in the subtle comedian uniform. Yeah. So it's like... Um, Maybe like the 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 suit jacket, but then the jeans, and right. then the bright sneakers. Like, oh, come on, he's wow. a little, yeah, we don't yeah. know what's gonna come out of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's dressed for fun, and and then and then the the t shirt under the suit jacket with oh, a weird yeah. ironic logo on yeah, it. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. look, it's the Mr. Bubble logo. I'm nuts. You, and we don't know a, what I'm gonna do. I mean, if I'm willing to put this on, what's gonna happen? <laughs> Oh Jesus, it's so pathetic, so needy. There's nothing. That's what's oh, what, that's what's hard fuck. about watching you when you're yourself when you're young. It's not that you're not funny. It's that you're needy. You're yes. so needy. It was both. Yeah, I, I was <laughs> not funny and I was needy. That's yeah. that when we were going through old radio stuff. I was. I was <laughs> so happy to be there. Months out of doing construction, <laughs> so I was just so happy. But to you be get a pass. I'm like, oh my god, I'm like, so everything was so like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over the top. Uh, fun. I was just so eager to like anything. I'd throw in an imitation. Do I must perform? Because oh, uh, the attic oh. was waiting for you. Yes, that attic was. So uh, you kind of yeah. have a pass. Oh. You came out of no- this kid. This kid. Oh, this he, kid. This kid. came out. He came out him. of nowhere, though. But it is, you I'm know, that I started, Vulcan. and that's where he's going. <laughs> <laughs> I started this shit when I was eighteen. He came. He's in his thirties. Comes out of nowhere. Oh, wow. and fucking boom. Oh, he's, I, but boom. But you know what? You know what? His advantage was, and yours too, is because you started young, and you started from with the past. You had, <laughs> you had this cliff of darkness behind you. Of, there's, there's nothing to fall back on. Like, yes, so you've got to work twice. It, it makes you work twice as hard when you have got nothing yeah, else. Yeah. We yeah. both you had know? nothing. Like yeah, I had, when I started out. doing stand-up, I kind of blew everything else. Right. And I realized I can't work in every office I got. I worked in, either people hated me or I hated it and I had a terrible attitude. Because it's someone just like, I have a cliff to my back. Yeah. If I fall back, I will fall off the planet just and gone. be gone. So, You're one of those people that, well, they fell through the the cracks of society. <laughs> I, li- I literally, that's yeah, where I yeah. would have ended up. I would have yeah. ended up Yeah, all those yeah. guys almost made it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Because that's the other side of this. Right. There's guys that uh, almost made it but had the cliff at their back <laughs> and they fucking fell. Uh, how many, how many whatever comedic reason. geniuses do we know? Truly visionary guys that just never... Yeah. They're just gone, or they're still around. But what do you do? Or they made oh. bad decisions. A lot of them, or they a lot right. of people wanted to just work. The, the big road headliners of like 1992. I started 1990, wow. and a lot of those guys began in the 80s. And they they headlined before they were ready because the 80s had a fucking million clubs, so everyone got the headline. Oh yeah. And then they got <laughs> bottlenecked, squeezed out in the fucking early 90s, and they couldn't find work. And like those guys that would work in like 92, 93, they're gone now. There's yeah. No, the, a lot of those rooms are around. So also yeah. they got used to a 
a certain lifestyle yeah. of I make this much money, I do this, and the people that survived when the boom stopped, and there were people that did make it, mm-hmm. but those are the ones who are like, I got to get some other shitty job and keep doing stand up until it comes around again. Yeah, yeah. Some people did do that, but you're right. There were some people that are like, um, you know, I used to headline at, uh, oh. yeah, I used to headline at a club chain that does not exist. It doesn't right. even exist and anymore. And no one cares. Yeah, you know? yeah. And there were also those guys that well, you know they wrote their 45 minutes and then they just I'm just, I'm done writing. Yep, I got, exactly. I got oh, my 45. Dude. That's my life. Yeah, absolutely. My life's comedy. Career. I don't understand those guys. Why would I go on stage for no money? You see, some of those guys come through, you know, once a year, and, and you go see them. You're like, that, what are you doing? It's the same thing. Same yeah. exact thing. Isn't it fun? I thought it was fun writing jokes. <laughs> that was the whole point of doing this. You get to you have to do the same shit over yeah. and over again. New stuff. Yeah. yeah. Those guys are. I'm merciless with those guys. They're fucking lazy. Yeah. Think yeah. you're fucking lazy. Yeah. Fucking write a joke or try a joke. <laughs> they were the uh, same fucking yeah, dog yeah. shit inflection for ten years. <laughs> oh fuck you. Fuck you. I, I, on HBO, uh, I think it's HBO Classic Comedy, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, they they play a lot of the old specials from the 80s and, and stuff. And you see these guys, and you're like, oh yeah, that guy. And he had like a little a little fame back mm. then. Uh-huh. And you realize you never saw this guy after like the yeah. boom of uh, stand up comedy. Are, just they're gone. Are they? I was gonna ask. Are they still doing comedy, but in some Who weird the fucking fuck even knows places they just or disappear? I don't even know. Something yeah. just disappear, man. A lot of them. A lot of the guys that I started with in D.C. Uh, these headliners ended up on uh, morning radio doing A.M. Oh, really? Not like not like satellite stuff. But I mean, like A.M. local and angry, like beyond <laughs> yeah, conservative, yeah. you know, cause, and, and, like there was a guy, I remember a guy that I used to work with, and we weren't really friends, work with him, and he was going off about, well, you know, I used to be a comedian and, and black people in clubs, let me tell you something, because I've actually experienced it, I'm like, was it, yeah, Kramer? The, it was, well, but it was like, I see what you're saying, but you're basing four, you're basing a political philosophy on three bad nights that you had at Garvin's, <laughs> which, by the way, were bad nights, but you need to, like, and, like that was Garvin's. his argument with the call. Yeah. Oh, Gar- you ever do Garvin? No, but I remember the name from DC. <sighs> Garvin's was their their big claim to fame. They're gone. Is that they uh, uh, they had Dave Chappelle starting out. He uh, oh. got his start there, and they treated him like such absolute dog shit. Yeah. That he left for New York, and then I remember. A club, another club, not Garvin's, but one a lot like Garvin's. Dave Chappelle was getting ready for his first hour, the Killing Them Softly. And he called, his managers called the club and said, Dave would like to do the weekend. You can have him for $800 for the whole weekend. He just wants to do sets. You know, this is the last minute. You just, all you gotta do is give him 800 bucks. So, you know, this is Dave Chappelle, you know, right? Yeah, he probably just wanted some money. He was already Dave Chappelle. Food or pay for his yeah, own. exactly. Right. And the, and they wouldn't pay him. They wouldn't do it. Ooh, and wow. then I, I heard the two mm-hmm. managers talking and one of was like fucking kid used to MC here for twenty five bucks a set five years ago and suddenly got to give him eight hundred dollars. Oh, it's like, well, because he's not the kid. You <laughs> yeah. like in their mind, you're just frozen there and that's yeah, yeah, you're still the same. You piece. How yeah. great is it they're gone? How great! Oh, is it they're, they're all there? the whole thing just collapsed. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is nice when uh, you get a, a <laughs> club from a, a scumbag club, a club owner running it, and, and it just <laughs> goes belly up. <laughs> The good, that yeah. Fuck, yeah. Oh, it's the, it's just the. Ooh. It happened with bands too. When we used to play, and uh, you know, at the end of the night, you go to get paid, and there's always a problem. You know, well, yeah. you know, we had the door count, and it was this. It's like we had our own guy with it, and I, you know, I gotta go with my guy. <laughs> and you're like, you just, you really, just you're gonna screw me dimed. on twenty five people. You prick. Yeah. Like, like you, you do realize this can't sustain. Like, eventually, <laughs> right. your club is just going to collapse. Right, right, right. There's no way if you keep pissing the talent off, yeah, no one will come back Fucking everyone here. over. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's and they all try to. They yes, all try yes. to fuck you for eight seats or ten seats. Or, no, we're doing a golden ticket thing, you know, but you aren't supposed to because we have a contracted ticket price. Uh. They all try to get an extra few dollars. See, that's what, again, if they were trying to fuck me over for 20 grand, I would at least respect right, right. that I'm dealing with a supervillain. But when you're, <laughs> when you're dealing with someone, I mean, like, you're... I just talked to you for 20 minutes because you were trying to get like $48 out of me. That's right. what, that's what yeah. drives me crazy. Yeah, yeah. 
just you know, uh, yeah, uh, that scumbag. much. And it's weird when, the, when you have these these like old clubs that like for years you worked in, and then you realize that it's 2013, and you're going back October 11 and 12 <laughs> to the comedy cabaret at Poco's restaurant in Doylestown. <laughs> Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> tickets are on sale now. I'm working on my new hour, so I'm just going. There to, yeah, and tickets are cheaper. We're doing $15 tickets. Uh, I wanted to do $10 tickets, but they couldn't do them because they make no liquor money. And uh, it's, it's where I want to go just to just to work. I'm going to have, like, maybe some paper with me and just work oh, on the material. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. No, I, I, when I was doing this, I just taped my new special uh, in July, and I did the same thing. I There was a... Um, I did a every Thursday night. I did. A, there's this little art gallery near me that also does stand up. And I go, let me just have Thursday nights. And I got to go there every night for three months. Mm -hmm. And then I would also go every Monday, one Monday and Tuesday month. I go down to the Irvine Improv, which is in a mall, and you oh, gotta yeah. edit your shit. Like you can't just go. Let's just uh, see where this goes. Go. Like no, <laughs> they want to see a show. So all the stuff that I would kind of spew out at the art gallery, I then had to go edit down in oh, wow, Irvine, and it idea. really helped. It was really yeah, good. Yeah. That's really smart. Yeah, I love doing stuff like that. I usually do that right before a special is shot. Like, I'll usually go into smaller rooms and just completely... But that's, you know, you're seeing the special almost. This is... I probably have, since I shot, probably... 35 new Already? minutes. Already? Yeah, about the wow. It's been five months. It's been five months. 35 new months. But uh, 35 new minutes. So I would say, uh, you know... You'll have close to a new 45, and I'll play with the crowd a little bit. It's, but I love doing that. I, That's like, great. I saw, I saw yep. Colin in uh, Long Island City when he was just starting working on the last... The unconstitutional, uh, yeah. Yeah, unconstitutional. No kidding. And it was fucking... It was great. Just watch him, and, and he'd go through something and be like, hmm... Well, that don't work. <laughs> but it was great just watching him uh, right. throw that shit around and try to. Then he says the fix same thing it. on HBO when he does it. How fucking funny is he? He's it's amazing. It's, it's depressing. <laughs> he really it really is. Fantastic. I could man. do maybe one joke on the Constitution and it would wind up being about Ben Franklin's gay socks. <laughs> 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 and he didn't even write the Constitution. Which is like a you know, book. speaking of funny, we do have Jake Lombardi coming in today. Oh, oh yes, man. for real? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. If you want, yeah, if you want to stick around, and he's doing. If, if you'll let me, yeah. if not, I'll totally leave. No, but God, he's damn, doing damn. comedy too. He's ninety-two, so he's up on the stage <sighs> where that bull can rage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Although yeah, I can I'm fight, I'd much rather hear myself <laughs> recite. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> that was brutal. Is he really doing comedy, though? Yeah, he did it At 92? Years. Yeah, oh, God, yeah. No, I know, but he's 92. Well, he, he comes with his Rickles wife. Is Rickles in his 90s? No, he's 80. But Rickles, Rickles, yeah, but Rickles, Rickles also wasn't belted in the head by Sugar Ray Robinson <laughs> yeah, a million times. For a total of 106 <laughs> rounds. <laughs> good point, Jimmy. No, yeah, good point. Very good. We'll be right back on Point Counterpoint. <laughs> well, if you're sticking around, why don't we take a break? Patton Oswalt on Twitter. He's a really good one to follow. Yes. So we'll continue with Patton. Stay there. Thank you. Tell him, Fred. <laughs> the virus. Serious XM. This is the Opie and Anthony Show.